Welcome to web application pen testing. This whole module is huge. There's so much that we realistically could do, could do here. It could take months and months and months to build proficiency here. This is its own course. This is its own subject matter. This is its own field of study. So we're going to highlight it as opposed to get into all the nitty gritty details. So it has to deal with web applications. There was a book written some time ago called The Web Applications uh, Hacker's Handbook. And it will be the go-to book for years and years to come. This book has been light years ahead of just about anything that you'll find on this subject matter. There's also some really other good books out there. I don't want to discount those, uh, but this is basically the new foundation for how to approach this, this whole field. Okay. So the, the concept here is, uh, besides, besides the obvious of uh, web applications, it's how does, uh, what, are, what are all the components of them, how do they go wrong? So let's start here with some basic concepts here. Because they're web applications, this is where we get cross-site scripting. It exploits the relationship between the client and the server, cross-site scripting. Oh, you also have vast amount of information leakage. Some of it uh, out there, which is non harmless or not harmful in itself, but could result in a secondary attack, uh, which could be harmful. Okay, so information leakage. Things as simple as uh, error messages. Well, at first they don't seem like a big deal. But if that error message um, allows you to exploit or gain the insight necessarily to exploit the service, that ultimately could lead to you know credit card numbers on your website. Okay, um, content spoofing. Okay, websites hold content, legitimate content and bad content, so you can spoof that content. Okay, weak authentication. Everything about the authentication process. I mean, authentication in a nutshell is you know I'm a claimed identity, prove it. Okay, well, we all connect to a web server, so let's exploit that relationship. Cross site request forgery. You kind of have to deal with this one backwards. It's a forged request that goes from one site to another. Uh, brute forcing, okay? You know, mom, are we there yet? Mom, are we there yet? Mom, are we there yet? You know, keep trying things over and over and over and over again. If someone is not monitoring the web application, you can just have at it. Predictable resources. Right. For example, uh, it's pretty well known that you can go to forward slash administrator and that's normally the administrative login for the web portal. That stuff realistically should be changed. Uh, SQL injection, its own field of study in the terms of databases. Well, most web resources are stored in the database, whether it be MySQL or MSQL or Oracle or whatever the database is, SQL injection is its own field of study. Session fixation. This is where the hacker has some information and he needs to get a victim to concentrate on what the web hacker is now saying, hey, please click on this because this will get me in. So you've tricked the user into clicking on something and that ultimately exploits something. No session expiration or indefinite session times. This is also another problem with web servers. Web 1.0 concepts versus web 2.0 concepts. Web 1.0 concepts, these were more or less static sites or resumes or it was all about the business at hand. Web 2.0 is less about the business and more about the end users using the website. So a great example of Web 1.0 versus 2.0 is just a very static web page, that's Web 1.0. Things like YouTube or any customer oriented website like YouTube where it's all user generated content or user generated features, those are Web 2.0 concepts. So let's look at those just a little bit more. Things like blogs, all right? If you can have everybody and their uncle go to a website and post a blog, well, it's user generated content, therefore Web 2.0. You have concepts like Ajax. Google uses these, YouTube uses these. This is when you start typing and it starts to predict and narrow down what you're actually searching for. Or even Flash, you could consider that Web 2.0 oriented. Or tools like jQuery, or cloud concepts in general. This is really storing things out on the internet um, in some sort of public fashion. Like a great example of cloud storage would be Dropbox. 
uh, or wiki, Wikipedias, or uh, you know, online dictionaries and things like that, or gaming sites, or even traditional RSS or social networking in general. So we're very much Web 2.0 now. It's all about the end users and making the website valuable for the users. The site that you're on right now, Web 2.0 oriented, it's focusing on the end users. Okay. So when it comes to hacking web applications, there's all sorts of threats that could go wrong, okay? Things like cookie poisoning, you know, web servers store little pieces of code on your client side computer, well, you can poison them. Directory traversal, navigating, predicting, and enumerating what the directories look at look like. Very easily you could figure out if it's Unix oriented or Apache versus uh, Windows oriented. Um, unvalidated input, okay, can you just supply anything to the web server? SQL injection, notice I have a uh, note here, cheat sheet. Uh, I use cheat sheets whenever I possibly can. SQL injection cheats, cheat sheets, cross-site scripting cheat, cheat sheets. Um, apparently I can't say the word cheat sheet, but that's okay. Use them, okay? Use them to your advantage. Instead of trying to memorize all of the possible combinations of SQL injection for MS SQL or MySQL or Oracle, you know, use cheat sheets. Use them to our advantage. Same thing with cross-site scripting. You want to know what they look like? There's plenty of cheat sheets out there. Use them. It's a great way to kind of keep a lot of information on the tips of your fingers. Cross-site request forgery, we've already talked about. Form tampering, insecure storage, or how does the web server store its information that the users are uploading? Are there picture directories? Are there video directories? What are the permissions on those directories? How are you handling errors? Are you, you know, giving an error message to your end user? Does the end user even need to see that? Buffer overflows are its own field of study. Log tampering, clearing your logs, changing the integrity of them. All of the account management. Remember, Web 2.0 is user-centric, so users are going to need to have accounts. How do you manage them? How do you do things like password reset functions and things like that? How do you manage sessions? Uh, can you just go to the online site and add something to a checkout without creating an account? Well, ultimately, you're storing things on a server. Okay, um, platform specific exploits, either the application in themselves, be it Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, or maybe at the operating system level, is it you know Unix versus Windows, etc. Um, authentication hijacking, see the um, session hijacking module. Uh, cookie snooping, just finding out what's in the cookie in itself. Session fixation, tricking the user. Malicious code execution. Denial of service, that's its own field of study. No encryption, no SSL, no IPsec, no uh, transport level security, um, even uh, XML poisoning. These are all potential threats for things to go wrong um, in the world of web application pen testing. So let's look at the countermeasures. Become an expert. It's really that simple. Normally I like to list off you know, the top 10 or 15 here. In this case, there's just way too many. I would fill up this whole board four or five times over. There is so much that goes on specifically in this subject matter. You have to become an expert. This is not something that you're going to learn overnight. Learning each one of these techniques, you know, just learning uh, cross-site scripting and, and form tampering, that could take a while to learn, as opposed to buffer overflows or SQL injections. Some of it's, you know, you have to learn the whole field of databases before you can just become good at SQL injection. Versus, uh, you know, you want to become a great web application pen tester, you have to understand all of the components of HTML. One of the best tools out there for learning this is a tool called the Burp Suite. It is something that you can use to dissect the web process over and over and over again. So let's go ahead and look at some hands-on examples.